Our next speaker is Najibulam Ludin, um, who will be speaking on the Water Cooperation and Diplomacy Department for the University for Peace in San Jose, Costa Rica. Uh, and I'd also like to thank him and, and all our future presenters as well for please making sure we limit ourselves to, I originally said 15, but 15 to 20 minutes um, out of respect for our colleagues. Thank you. No, I would like to talk for 25 minutes. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, most welcome to the uh, ICERM uh, conference on ethno-religious studies. Uh, this is Najibullah Ludin. Uh, uh, I'm currently uh, doing my third master's degree in uh, water cooperation and dip diplomacy. It's a joint master program in University for Peace, Costa Rica, San Jose. Uh, I did Delft, the Netherlands and the Oregon State University. Uh, so now um, in first semester, we are totally focusing on peace studies look, uh, in university, United Nations University for Peace in Costa Rica. So I'm in my first semester doing my third master's uh, program. So the topic that today I'm going to cover, I, I would like, I apologize if it takes more than 20 minutes, but I'm going to cover that in 22, 25 minutes because it's a huge topic and I, I, I should uh, cover every point and aspects of the, 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 the paper. The challenges to peace dialogue between Afghans and Taliban. So the table of content, I would uh, uh, were, uh, focus on uh, objectives of my research, the methodology, introduction, peace with Taliban. What are the challenges we, uh, 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 when, when it comes to peace dialogue between Afghans and Taliban? In uh, I have the conclusion and recommendations. So the food is ready, that's why I should go faster. Uh, so there are four or five uh, objectives first. I will uh, trace the, the challenges to peace dialogue between Afghans and Taliban since the government, uh, since the establishment of new government in 2001. Then I will talk why peace dialogue uh, uh, are dead, or uh, I mean are deadlocked, or uh, they, they stopped or after the collapse of Taliban regime. The second, uh, the third, uh, why the US led uh, NATO uh, strategists uh, failed to bring peace and security in Afghanistan after excluding Taliban from Bonn Agreement. Uh, then uh, why the current uh, policy of US uh, as well as Afghan government failed to bring peace and stability within the country and uh, they failed to, to start or re assume neg uh, resume negotiation with Taliban. And finally some recommendations uh, I'll offer for the government as, uh, as, uh, as uh, my research is going on. So introduction, uh, as uh, one clause, uh, uh, clause way, if I pronounce that correctly, said in uh, 1911, a war is a way of uh, violence, the forcing the, the opponent to fulfill our uh, will. Afghanistan has been facing uh, four decades of war since uh, let's say 1980 or maybe 19, uh, yeah, 1980 or maybe earlier than that. Uh, this, uh, the, since the war is going on, uh, it uh, impacted directly the prisons, the huge or the greater prisons of uh, different uh, types of anti-government groups such as Taliban, Al-Qaeda, the Islamic uh, State of Iraq in Syria. Now it's called in Afghanistan the Khorasan, Khorasan branch. Uh, it, it's established at the eastern part of the country. I'm going to talk about that. Uh, and uh, why Taliban has a greater influence uh, within the country, uh, it is because of a weaker government, the loyalty of foreign, uh, uh, sorry, the f loyalty of uh, the national forces, security forces, the high corruption within the government as well as in Ministry of Defense, in Ministry of uh, Interior Affairs of the country the lack of the capacity building of the security forces. Uh, this was the mission of ISAF, I mean in uh, NATO forces in Afghanistan. And uh, lack of rule of uh, law, specifically in rural areas. And also uh, why uh, the country is suffering uh, uh, lack of, uh, 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 lack of uh, rule of uh, law, specifically in rural areas, uh, it, because of a shift in policy of United States as well as NATO forces in Afghanistan. That's, what, that, that, that's called Bergdahl uh, 
Bo Bergdahl, name of a soldier. He, he was a detainee with Taliban. Uh, Bo Bergdahl agreement, which was held in 2014. And then uh, uh, due to uh, the failure of US as well as uh, uh, Afghan government policy for bringing peace and security, uh, uh, due to that, the Taliban has been in intensifying or let's say uh, escalating their attacks, deadly attacks within the country due to all the uh, security uh, threats has been escalating in the country. Uh, the Afghan government, the current government, NUG or Na National United Government is willing to uh, cooperate and willing to invite the anti-government groups for peace negotiation. And that's why the government is financing one group of the Taliban, which was officially uh, 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 separated from the main group to come to negotiation and help with the government in bringing peace and security within the rural areas. But what uh, is statistics shows, SIGAR, the Special uh, Inspector General of uh, uh, America for Reconstruction of Afghanistan, they have found that, presently speaking, in 2018, uh, the presence of Taliban in Afghanistan, uh, Afghanistan uh, actually Taliban are conquering the country within the percentage of 45 percent. I mean, 45 percent of the country is conquered by Taliban, based on 2018 uh, data. Data said, but uh, although their presence was uh, 28 percent in 2015, it means now Taliban has a greater influence, and in, in, within the country, specifically in rural areas. So what U.S. did uh, in 2018, uh, the U.S. government, I'm going to discuss this in, in, in more details, but uh, since there was a huge shift in the policy of the uh, U.S., uh, the current Secretary General of, uh, Secretary of State of U.S., uh, Mike Pampo, if I pronounce that correctly, he appointed uh, an Afghan-born uh, American diplomat called Zalmay Khalilza, but he is now representing U.S. Uh, to be as the re special representative of U.S. Uh, to start negotiation with Taliban. What happened that uh, uh, they directly in 2018, specifically in October, uh, in October 2018, directly started negotiating with Taliban without the presence of Afghan government. It means, let's say, someone who is not from my country discussing with an uh, anti-government group within my country without the presence of me, without the presence of the current government. So they started the negotiation in nine rounds and uh, it was going well. And uh, based on uh, negotiation, the accord or the agreement was uh, uh, prepared in principle. Uh, and what happened, uh, Based on this negotiation, the Taliban agreed on the Taliban and U.S. agreed on four points. First, Taliban will no longer use uh, let any other uh, group, entity group, uh, to use Afghanistan as a place, as a platform to uh, launch uh, attacks on other countries outside Afghanistan. The sec second agreement between Af uh, between U.S. and Taliban was that. Uh, Taliban will, uh, the U.S. and NATO forces will leave Afghanistan in 16 months of after the settlement of, after signing the agreement, the peace agreement between U.S. and uh, Taliban. The third one was the both sides uh, agreed to start negotiation with Afghan elect government after signing the, the, the agreement between U.S. President Donald Trump and the aid of Taliban or the leader of Taliban. And finally, Taliban and U.S. agreed uh, on a permanent ceasefire after the agreement. But what happened in uh, September 5th, 2019, uh, despite of uh, ongoing uh, agreements and negotiation uh, between Taliban and Afghan, between Taliban and U.S., uh, Taliban was escalating uh, deadly attacks uh, on foreign troops as well as Afghan troops and civilians in Afghanistan, specifically in the capital city, Kabul. What happened on September 7th, the 5th, they uh, conducted a deadly attack on uh, civilians and that resulted in killing 11 
uh, civilians. In addition to 11 people, one Afghan soldier, a Romanian American soldier, sorry, one Romanian American soldier was killed due to that attack. And President Trump on September 8, 2019, tweeted that we would like to pause the peace dialogue between US and Taliban, and we are no longer interested in uh, keeping on the peace between Afghan, uh, between Taliban and US in a tweet. So this is a, a photo, uh, I cannot uh, move it. This is a, I don't know if it is visible, yeah. So this is a photo of uh, peace dialogue between uh, Taliban and US. Uh, I don't know if I can, yeah. I should use my, this, uh, this diplomat is Afghan-born American diplomat, uh, Zalmay Khalilza. So he is uh, discussing on behalf of US uh, uh, administration with Taliban in Qatar, the, in Doha, the uh, capital of uh, Qatar. Is that a photo? <clears throat> yeah. So the objective, uh, the, the, the method that I applied for this research was uh, qualitative research. I focused on different case studies, life history, culture, interviews of the uh, interviews of uh, elders and for data collection i have uh, searched for different uh, conference papers journal papers uh, as well as reports and case studies i should go faster oh 10 minutes oh sorry so peace with taliban i should start from here <clears throat> since the beginning of uh, since the establishment of new government in 2001 by the u.s lead uh, nato forces in afghanistan uh, Always the government of Afghanistan was willing to, to invite uh, anti-government groups for peace and negotiation. That's why the previous president of the country, Ahmed Karzai, who ran the country for, for around 14 years, uh, he uh, conducted a Lue Jerga. Lue Jerga, it means a traditional gathering. It's, uh, it's a, a sort of traditional gathering in Afghanistan where the government invites elders based on Afghan tradition and historical background. They invite elders to uh, consult the government regarding uh, important issues within the country, like peace, like security, like, like changing the, the, the regulation or the uh, rule or the policies of the government. So he, even uh, the, the, the previous president was willing to uh, invite Taliban for a negotiation. He, established and inaugurated uh, HPC, I Peace Council, and uh, were, he invited Taliban that if Taliban cut ties with Al-Qaeda, their names will be removed from blacklist of US and United Nations. But what was the stance and the perspective of Taliban regarding this HPC, I Peace Council, as well as this Louis Jerga or I uh, Elder Gathering? They first rejected the peace deal. Second, they killed the head of peace council. He was a famous and influential uh, character in Afghanistan. He was killed uh, by Taliban and assassinated by Taliban. Uh, in addition to that, uh, as a reaction for the HPC or I peace council, Taliban uh, started a sort of campaign, uh, a sort of, uh, let's say, uh, intelligence campaign that's called uh, I.O. or information operation campaign and specifically a rural area. Why in rural area? I'm going to come in next slide. Uh, so that they gather in intelligence data from the people who are living in rural areas and use them against the government and provoke the rural area uh, people who are living in the rural area as, uh, as well as indigenous people to provoke them against the current elect government. Uh, so what, what sort of medias or, or uh, uh, system they were using for, for uh, 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 this uh, uh, information operation campaign? They were using social medias, Facebook, Twitter, and official statements, threatening letters, pro propaganda uh, among the people. And uh, to, in order to intensify such a sort of uh, uh, influence within rural area, Taliban has been focusing on three important social identities of Afghans. Afghans are very sensitive in these three, specifically the rural people who are living in rural area. 
One is religion, the other is culture, and the other, the last one is the politics. So, first of all, the government which was established in 2001, the democracy and stability which was established by, based on the presence of native forces in Afghanistan, ISOF, that, that, that time it was called ISOF, it was failed compared to, to the, the traditional way of uh, 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 governance that we had in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan, specifically in rural area, during this 40 or 50 years, people do not cast wood hiddenly to, to, let's say, elect a president. In Afghanistan, we had kings. So a gathering, ulama, I mean, Islamic scholars or elders gather in a room. They will say, OK, let's elect the president, select, the, the, let's say, the king. So we, we want to, this guy is going to be the president. And he, he is going to be the president. So it's in contrast with the new uh, approach which was brought by Western countries, that's the democracy and stability. The other thing, during this 18, 10 minutes, <laughs> this uh, 18 years, uh, no uh, specific pros and uh, prosperous future was made by the government for the people, specifically for rural uh, people who are living in rural areas. And also, what happened that uh, after the, uh, the, the invasion of Afghanistan by NATO forces, the NATO forces, specifically the US, decided to not have a broader presence in rural areas. They decided to be in uh, uh, urban areas like Kabul, Erat, Badakhshan, and so on, some other provinces, not in rural areas. But uh, based on a statistic in 2018, around 63 persons of Afghans are li living in rural area, not within the cities, but in rural area, there was no presence of NATO forces. So what happened that Taliban had a greater influence in rural area, they started to be more present in rural area. And in addition to that, uh, as I have already said, that the traditional of way of governance was more acceptable by rural uh, uh, people, specifically the elders of the villages, compared to the presidential system in Afghanistan. And also, uh, the US policy uh, after the invasion of Afghanistan, NATO forces, specifically US, did not have a background information about the culture, about the language, about the, the religion uh, of the country. That's why they had a weaker uh, influence compared to Taliban. But why about Taliban? First of all, I'm Pashtun, like the president, and the Taliban, the majority are Pashtuns. Based on a statistic, 42% of the population of the country in, 19, in 2019, the population of the current, uh, the population of the country is 38 million, more than 30 million. But 42% of the populations are Pashtuns who have their own language. I'm also Pashtun, other scholar is also Pashtun. They have their own culture, language, tradition, I'm going to come. And they have one specific concept, that is Pashtun Wali. If anyone wants to get in touch and get al along with Pashtun, they should know this Pashtun Wali concept. It's a concept of honor, shame, pride, loyalty, and respect for the elders. Even an elder, elder of a village, say something for the people, Pashtun, that you do this, even that, that thing is wrong, they will respect that because it's a way of respect for the Pashtun Wali concept. But on the other side, the US forces did not know about that. And Taliban, uh, Taliban uh, know how to, because Taliban's are Pashtun, they know the language, they know the culture, the tradition, the history of the country. So they know how to get along with, with ruler people and how to receive their kindness, their services uh, from in the rural area. So in, a, in addition to that, uh, unfortunately, US forces, without uh, consulting with the government, specifically the previous government, they conduct night raid in the rural areas. But Pashtuns are very sensitive when it comes to the issue of women. Because at night, uh, when they conduct night raid, they were forcefully entering to the house of Pashtuns. And Pashtuns are very sensitive when there is a woman and someone else, a foreigners, coming to their houses and checking his wife, I mean, uh, what do you call it? Out. Checking out? Or? Out. Yeah, their wives, they are so that they are very sensitive. And in addition to that, they were misbehaving. I, I'm bringing a photo here. 
I need to go there to, to explain that. Imagine uh, this is a US soldier. So he is discussing with, uh, I don't know if it's visible, yeah, with the elders of the villages in Pashtun area. But on the other side, can you differentiate between Taliban and uh, 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 in a civilian here? Can you differentiate? But I can differentiate that because people who are sitting here, they are Taliban. But people who are sitting this, I don't know if it's visible for you, for me it's very visible. They are the civilians. They can interact with, with the people in a very uh, simple way because they know the language, they know how to behave, they know how to salute them, they know how to respect them, they know the, the, the history of the people. But this is the way they are reacting with the elders of the village. That's why they, they would like to revenge, they would like to uh, support Taliban and stand against the government. Uh, and I talked about these three issues, Islam, culture, and politics. Islam is a very sensitive between Pashtun, culture that's based on Pashtun wali, and politics. They, uh, they select or elect their president based on uh, uh, Islamic shura or gathering. They, they say, okay, this is the president and he's going to be the president. So I, uh, just because the, the, the um, uh, so what are the challenges? There are three challenges now to the peace dialogue. One is the division of Taliban uh, network. Uh, after the death of uh, Mullah Omar, the head of Taliban, or in Arabic that's called Amir al muminin it means the head of Muslims, uh, Taliban, they have their own terms and, uh, and uh, methodology, terminology. After he is dead, uh, the Taliban group were divided into four. Shura, it means group, group, a group of, or a network. One is Shurai Kweta, located in Pakistan, the most influential one. Shurai Mashad, located at the border of Iran and Afghanistan at the west. Shura of the north, located at the north near Uzbekistan. And Shura of Rasul, located within the country. So according to Afghan political analyst who was functioning as a politician in the, even in the period of Taliban, he says that he believes that after the death of Mullah Omar, who was the head of Taliban, no, none of these groups, four groups, had the chance to be to represent uh, Taliban. Why? Because they were not elected. None of the leaders of these four groups were elected based on the jerga. Jerga it means gathering, gathering of uh, let's say uh, elder gatherings or ulama. Ulama is Arabic word. Is it means Islamic conservative. Not all people. So. Despite of this division, the HPC or I uh, Peace Council would like to negotiate and start in a negotiation with Taliban regarding to peace. The second challenge is the lack of consensus among Afghan politics. Due to the failure of Afghan government in 2014, uh, there was a national, a national united government was established in Afghanistan. So uh, there are, we have the president and the COO or uh, chief of executive. The president of his own party, the CEO has his own party. The HPC or I Peace Council are the members of HPC are from these two parts. And sometimes they disagree on the policy regarding to negotiation and peace with Taliban. That's the second challenge. The third challenge is uh, 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 lack of uh, firm strategy within the, in, in tackling peace issue in Afghanistan by US. Imagine in August 2017, Donald Trump in a press TV conference uh, uh, stated his policy, US uh, policy regarding South Asia. Based on that policy, uh, more power was given for US soldiers to tackle uh, extremism in Afghanistan. In addition to that, putting more pressure on Pakistan. And finally, a slight increase in the number of NATO forces as well as US forces to tackle the issue of extremism in Afghanistan. But in 2018, as I earlier mentioned, in October 2018, without uh, uh, consulting with the government, the U.S. decided to change their policy regarding Afghanistan because of the election is coming in, uh, in U.S. in 2020, I think in November. So they decided to start negotiation with Taliban in uh, Doha, the capital of Qatar. In nine rounds, they decided to discuss uh, with Taliban and the U.S. representative was uh, Zalmay Khalizad, as I already talked. They talked and they came to an agreement. But in September 
eight, the US uh, President Donald Trump tweeted that we would like to stop and pause the peace negotiation with Taliban because of that attack on one uh, that resulted in killing of one Romanian American soldiers that President Trump said he is uh, one of our greatest, greatest soldiers. So we would like to stop peace dialogue with Taliban. And you are the result of this uh, pause. So after the well, uh, after the cancellation of this uh, peace uh, treaty between Taliban and uh, US, both sides are threatening each other. For example, Mike Pampo, the secretary instead of the US, he said, conditions have been worsening and are about to get worse. Well, this is his tweet. While th there is, uh, this is not a war of attrition, I want the American people to know that President Trump is taking it to the Taliban. On the other side, the spokespersons of Taliban, he is also threatening U.S. by saying this will lead to more losses to the U.S. And Zabiullah Mujahid, the spokesperson of the Taliban, its credibility will be affected, its anti-peace stance will be exposed to the world, losses, of, uh, losses to the lives, and assets will increase. But he also added that we would like to resume negotiation with you in case if there is any political will. Robin Wright, uh, a contributor writer to the New Yorker uh, Times, uh, uh, believes that according to the Trump diplomacy, he will resume peace negotiation with Taliban after a short period of time. Just one slide, sorry for that. <laughs> uh, in conclusion, that, that's conclusion. Uh, perhaps the US government answer uh, from the presence of US and NATO forces in Afghanistan in 2001, they committed two biggest mistakes. So with reference, I have reference in my paper, but I didn't put it here. The first uh, reference uh, mistake was that during Bonn Agreement in 2001, when uh, the new government was going to establish in Afghanistan due to 30, more than 30, civil, uh, 30 years civil war in Afghanistan, Taliban, the US uh, and NATO uh, strategists denied the inclusion or the, can I use the inclusion? Yeah, the, the presence of Taliban uh, network or the leader of Taliban networks in Bona Agribin. They said, we will not let Taliban to, to, to be present in uh, peace negotiation in 2001 after the collapse of Taliban regime. So we will not give any position to them. This was the first mistake. The second mistake, and now, as I said, in 2018, they had a 44% presence in Afghanistan. It's a huge person, 44, around 50%. It means we have to recognize them as, a opposing, uh, as an opposing uh, group, and we have to give some positions, some, some seats in parliament as well as ministries to, them, to, to invite them as a sort of uh, compensation for bringing peace and security in Afghanistan. The second biggest mistake in 2018 the US committed was that the US started negotiation with Taliban without the presence of the elite government. Afghanistan government, which was uh, officially, uh, uh, the, the president was officially uh, elected by the people. He d does not have any presence in peace dialogue. Even the uh, special representative of US, he does not uh, report to the president. They are negotiating with, with, with another group within Afghanistan government. This is the second mistake. Even John Bolton, if I pronounce that correctly, sorry for my English, the ex-national security advisor, he is strongly disagree with the US, uh, with the US Taliban uh, uh, agreement regarding peace in Afghanistan. That's why one of the reasons that he resigned from his position was this, his stance. According to the Council on Foreign Relations, it's a paper, uh, they say engagement of elect government of Afghanistan should be a must, uh, it should be done by the, uh, by the US if they want to resume uh, peace dialogue with Taliban. And finally, the government, national United government, should restructure their policy regarding to peace with Taliban. And women should have a higher position in uh, talking and negotiating with peace. Why? The recommendation, sorry. I think we're all set. OK, this is the recommendation. Uh, first, the government should provide uh, social services in rural areas, because they should have a higher and most influential presence so that the people who are living in the rural area should trust the government and help with the government and cut ties with Taliban. The second one is uh, women's freedom, freedom of speech, 
should be addressed while negotiating with Taliban. Why? Taliban does not let women to go to school, to go to university, to work at the, uh, uh, at the community. That's why. And uh, in this uh, instance, uh, other stakeholders such as Iran, Russia, or China, particularly Pakistan, should have a higher position in bringing peace and security and negotiating with Taliban. The Afghan government should be more transparent in uh, letting people about the peace process and they should initiate some committees as well as an institution. I just combined that. So that to tackle peace, uh, extremism and to bring peace and security in Afghanistan. Thank you very much for it. Thank you.